I'm, like I said, going to give you mechanics, dynamics, and all that kind of thing from a non-physics point of view. Okay? So therefore, I assume you don't know what a force is. right? Maybe you sort of heard the word sort of bandy around, but in our mathematical modeling of motion, it has a very specific meaning. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and avoid some of the nuances and that kind of thing and give you as succinct a definition as I can for each of the different things, including for Newton's laws. Okay? I might miss some tiny little minor details here and there, but I want you to capture the sense of it because that's the most important part to equip you to do the mathematics. Okay? So the simplest way I can describe forces, are forces are anything, anything at all, that cause acceleration. Right? If there's something in the world and it can cause acceleration, then I call it a force. Right? Now, remember, acceleration for us has a very specific meaning mathematically. What does it mean when we've been thinking about motion? What is it? Okay, X double dot, it'd be under T. But what does it mean? Thank you. It's a change in velocity, right? So, what you're getting is something which causes acceleration, and acceleration causes a change in velocity. Now, I want you to remember. Change in velocity doesn't necessarily mean you're just getting faster. You can get slower as well. That's still a change in velocity. Um, you could be going at 50 meters per second and then still be going at 50 meters per second. But if the direction of that 50 meters per second changes, then there's a change in velocity, right? Because remember, velocity includes direction, unlike speed. Okay? So anything that causes this causes a change in velocity, which therefore indicates like where you are all right now, Pretty much you're all still, right? So there's no acceleration on you. Your velocity is not changing. But there are forces acting on you right now, right? I can think of two primary ones, each of which is counteracting the other. What are the two forces acting on you right now? The gravity and the normal force. Okay, so you've got gravity pulling you toward the center of the Earth, okay? But you're not moving. And the reason why is because there's another opposite force, right? You can call it the normal force because it's coming from the ground, perpendicular to the ground. Um, you could describe it really as, it's actually the electromagnetic force, isn't it? Because there's the electrons in your feet and the electrons in the ground, and they really, according to the Pali exclusion principle, hate each other's guts. So they won't, they refuse to be in the same spot, so that's why they're separate, okay? So underneath here, this is a really, really important idea. A net force of zero, Okay. So I really like this phrase, net force. You'll sometimes see it in textbooks or um, exams, that kind of thing. Okay. <laughs> it's sometimes called the resultant force because it's the, it's the force that results after you add everything together. If you've got a net force of zero, then there's no acceleration. But of course, you could have forces acting in all kinds of different directions, so long as they balance out, right? Balanced forces, net zero, that means no change in velocity, so something is still. Right, so before we uh, move off of this and start talking about the laws, I just want to think about some like typical forces that you'll encounter. We've already named a couple of them, right? So we said gravity. You're going to be talking about that a lot. Other forces, what was the other one? It's Keeping me from going straight through the floor. It's the so so when we say normal, when we say normal force, right? Remembering that like a normal, a tangent, a normal really tells you that direction, like where is which way is it facing, okay? But I'm now trying to understand like what different kinds of like what is it that is that is sending the normal force up through my feet? And the answer is in this particular case, it's the electromagnetic force. Okay, so that's fine. Electromagnetic, right? So. I'm just, I'm just, I'm putting it together. It's the, the electrons are doing their thing, right? And you guys know the electromagnetic force is one force. You've heard that in like very, very early science. Okay. What other kinds of forces, think now, just normal experience, can cause acceleration? Uh, okay. I'm, hmm. Okay. I'll come back to that one in a second. I'll come back to it. I'm trying to think of like causes, like overall type things. So let me give you an example. Um, how about friction? Friction? Friction exerts forces on objects because it causes them, generally, 
it causes a change in velocity to the opposite to whichever direction the velocity is. Yeah, so it's it's slowing you down. So air resistance um, is kind of like a it's a kind of friction, right? Um, and a few other ones. Two other main ones that you're going to um, that you're going to experience. Really, when we talk about air resistance or like water or whatever, that's really a medium that you're passing through. Okay, now I'm distinguishing that from, like remember I said this is kind of like a, these are kind of related together. I can talk about like the friction between my feet and the ground when I'm running. Okay, but that's not the medium I'm running through, I'm running through air. Yeah, so these are actually two different things, so I'm going to distinguish between them. And this is, we'll get to this under resistant motion. There's one more really important category um, that we're going to talk about, and I'll, I'll take um, Raph's example. No, I don't want to use this just yet. Um, if you've got something and it's spinning around, okay, like on the end of a string, okay, or like, yeah, okay, there you go, right? Um, what is it, for example, like you guys can see on the ends, see how there's those DNA strands on the ends? Those, those, can, can you see them? Okay, so they're on there. What is holding them to the fan? <laughs> okay, now the sticky tape is okay. All right, stop, stop. You're feeling very sleepy. Um, the sticky tape is holding on because it has what we call tension. Okay, so there is tension in that tape. There's tension in the blades of the um, of the fan. There's tension in like this is what's holding these things together and stopping it from just flying. Okay, now this is obviously not an exhaustive list, but these are the ones you're going to encounter most frequently. Um, <laughs> this is just kind of assumed. We just kind of assume that objects don't pass through each other, but um, it's an important thing for you guys to recognize that's what's going on. Okay. Right. So these are what forces are, and these are some examples. Let's talk about Newton's laws now, and there are three of them. Okay. Now, <coughs> um, again, remember I said to you, I'm going to try and give everything in as succinct a form as possible. Sometimes that means the grammar is slightly awkward, but I've tried to pack more meaning into less words so you have less to remember, because there's a lot of things to remember here. Okay. So, the first law is about inertia. So I'm going to come back to this idea of um, when you've got a net force of zero. A net force of zero results in, and this, this sort of comes out of the definition of what a force is, right? If you've got zero net force, then what you have, because your velocity isn't changing, that means your velocity is constant. Let me say that again, right? A force, by definition, is something that causes acceleration, causes a change in velocity. But if you don't have any net force, then there is no change in velocity, so it's constant. Okay. Now, uh, people who do physics here, you can help me out. The proper full statement of Newton's first law, it actually names the two kinds, the two instances of constant velocity that there are. Can you tell me what they are? Yeah? Okay, very good. So if you've got an object and it's at rest, okay, velocity zero, then constant velocity means it's still at zero. Okay, so that's fair enough. So stationary is one kind of constant velocity. But there is, of course, another kind, which is, I'm going to be a little more fine here, and again, I'm going to try and pack more meaning into less words. The alternative is uniform straight line motion. Okay? Now mark that. Every phrase has meaning. Uh, uniform, as in not speeding up, not slowing down. And of course, it has to be in a straight line. So if you've got an object and it's orbiting around the, a planet, right? It might have uniform, like it's not getting faster or getting slower, because it is orbiting after all. But it's not in a straight line. Well, why not? It, it's constantly turning, right? It's turning round and round and round. So that's not a constant velocity, right? The speed might not be changing, but the direction is changing all the time. Now, why is that? What is making its direction and therefore its velocity constantly change? What, what's the force? Answer, it's, it's gravity, right? Gravity is what's pulling it away. If, if you had an object orbiting around, right, and suddenly the planet just ceased to exist, right, just disappeared, what's going to happen to that object? It's going to fly off in a uniform straight line. Does that make sense? But isn't, um, isn't the earth, um, frame of reference, even though it's Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get to frames of references later. Okay. <laughs> I won't dig too deep down into them because we, for mathematical purposes, we don't worry about them. 
Okay? So I just, I'm just conveying to you enough of the physics to do the mathematical part. That makes sense. Um, so yes, so this, this, this tendency of objects, and we're going to talk about particles, bodies, things with mass, but we don't worry about them like spinning around, that kind of thing, on a point. Um, their tendency to resist acceleration, their tendency to, to remain at constant velocity, we call this inertia, right? So the first law is all about inertia. 